There we go. Hello, and welcome to the Vlogging Pod. Tonight, we are joined by S. S. Lee Fisher. Welcome to the room. How are you this evening? Hi, I am quite well, enjoying sunny Florida where, while the rest of the country is in a deep freeze. Oh my gosh, I know, right? Uh, we had a little bit of warm up today, but I wouldn't say it was a heat wave. <laughs> my so friends from all across the country are pinging me saying, I hate you living in Southern <laughs> Florida. <laughs> It is nice. I do enjoy visiting Florida myself. Um, so I'd like to start right off with your time in the Laurel Highlands. Tell me about growing up in Pennsylvania. Oh, it was an uh, it was a great place to grow up. I grew up in this tiny little town. We probably had about 1,500 people total in our little community. It was, kind, it was the kind of town where everybody knew everybody else's business and everybody was related two generations past. And, but it was the perfect little town to make friends to make sure that you were well cared for your neighbors looked in on other neighbors and even though at times it seemed like people were busybodies it, it was not it was a community of love and it was a great place to grow up the scenery is gorgeous it's part of the allegheny mountain range and we have these beautiful rolling hills and wonderful streams and lots of wooded areas and it was just the perfect spot to grow up nice so tell me tell me a little bit about how your home your your where you grew up is it has it been something that has inspired your writing since oh definitely my entire series, The Women of Campbell County, is set in the Laurel Highlands. Um, the series takes place in a fictional town of Campbellsville, and uh, I highlight fictional Campbell and Madison counties in the series, but I'm really basing this off of the little town where I grew up and I'm basing it on actual Westmoreland County, Indiana County and Cambria County in Pennsylvania. So my writing is uh, fictional and the town names are fictional, but it's based on that entire area. And it's also based on the people and their values from that area. Okay. So as we merge into your writing, let's let's talk a little bit about pharmacy to author. Explain to me how that leap happened. Well, it was kind of an awkward jump. Uh, during my career, I worked for a PBM, which is a pharmacy benefit management company. Okay. And um, a big one, actually, uh, it was a top 20, uh, a fortune top 20 company. And I had a pretty big job. And I wrote standards of practice and instruction manuals. And then I oversaw and um, validated and qualified all of the training manuals and material that went out to the entire clinical department so wow. I, I was writing very uh, clinically based um content and mm -hmm. then when my dad uh, took sick i'm daddy's little girl mm. and i needed a way to channel so i thought oh i can write so I started to write fiction. Well, let me tell you, if you can write analytical material, you cannot necessarily write fiction. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> but you but, did it. You did it, though. You proved that scenario wrong. 
Well, but I went back to school and actually spent the whole time during COVID uh, honing that craft and learning the art of fiction and storytelling. So nice. when I first attempted writing, my husband, who is my biggest fan and biggest supporter, I would read him a section and he would say, uh, share. We need a little bit of description in there. You know, like, what does the person look like? Mm -hmm. What does, you know, what does the table, what does the room look like? So I started writing. It was like uh, an onion, how you peel yes. an onion in layers. And that's how I learned to actually write fiction. I had to do it layer by layer. And then after completing these classes, I eventually learned I didn't have to layer it. I could do it from the beginning. Right. So as we have our, I'm a writer, so we all have our little places we like to write. I have my she shed and so I've got my sound booth, but I've got a little area outside and I've got a little couch area, like a kind of like a living room. So I kind of like to spread out all over in here when I do my writing. Tell me where is the best place that you do your writing? I heard something about a studio. So tell me about that. Oh, yeah, I took actually the third bedroom in the house and turned it into a writing studio, painting studio, sewing studio, anything creative that I want to do studio. So everything is actually just jam-packed in this smallest bedroom. Things are, um, it's chaotic organization is what it is in here. Mm. I know where everything is. My husband looks in the door and just rolls his eyes. Like, <laughs> how do you exist? Now, my other option is to actually add on an addition to the house, maybe another 500 square foot on the second floor, move all my creative space up there out of his way. For some reason, I can't get him to part with the $200,000 that I need to do that. So I'm <laughs> stuck in my little front room. <laughs> I like that. Can't get him to part with 200000 <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just chump change. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just chump change. <laughs> Well, I, I can totally relate. Um, I tried having offices in my house. Uh, we live very rural, but we're still close enough to the road that when a farm equipment comes by, you hear it. So my husband built me a building all the way in the back on our property. Good for so, you. Well, thank you. I truly enjoy it. It's like my little sanctuary to work. If um, I, I couldn't have a she shed because my pool literally backs up onto a nature preserve. So <laughs> if I'm going out, I'm cohabitating with the alligators in Florida. Oh, no. Oh, heavens. No, so, no, no, no. Yeah. Those are one of my worst fear would be an alligator. <laughs> um, yeah, my husband's always like, well, I'm not going to put a toilet out there because I've got to go all the way in the house. I do have running water, but I don't have a bathroom. And he says, I won't put a bathroom out there because I, I won't see you. You have to come back in the house. <laughs> so, well, they have their ways of maneuvering us, don't they? Yes, yes, they do. Well, it makes you feel loved that he wants me in there. So would you mind if I read a quote from you back from October 18, 2021? Um, no, I have no idea what you're going to quote, but please feel free to do so. Okay. Um, this is your quote. I wanted the reader to know what love is powerful and can overcome decided and hatred can overcome. And oh, I'm sorry, I'm not reading it right. Right. But overcome hatred. Tell us where that comes from. Uh, just to give you a little hint, just in case you don't remember. Um, this was about the book Hill House Divided. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> because I was struggling. When did I say that? <laughs> That's all right. I, I always try to put a little bit more detail in there. So explain to me about wanting to give your readers 
um, the knowledge that love is powerful and you can overcome um, hatred. Deceit and hatred, I think is what it was. Deceit and hatred. It, yeah, it would have been deceit and hatred because I probably was referencing two characters who mm -hmm. were both deceitful and, and deserved hate. And one is Olive, who is the mother and the protagonist in the first two books of the series. And by the time Hill House was written, it would have referred to Eddie, who mm -hmm. was a real scoundrel of a of a character and the protagonist the strong female protagonist had uh had to come to terms with abandonment um deception seat deceit and try to find it in her heart to either love or to lose and it isn't until the fourth book in the series, Between Two Dreams, that Harriet actually makes that decision. And uh, spoiler alert, I don't really want to tell you more, but she finds <laughs> a little bit of both. Oh, nice. So nice. She, she has a loss and she eventually can find love. Nice. So... As we talk about your work, let's discuss the series, The Women of Campbell County. Tell us about this series. Well, the, uh, it's strong females from K fictional Campbell County, which is based in Westmoreland, Laurel Highlands of Pennsylvania. And um, it's a multi-generational saga. It starts with Olive Westchester, who is one feisty little handful. And Olive is raised in a wealthy but very dysfunctional family. And she's, she's the kind that just scratches and claws for everything in life, but becomes very bitter because of it. Mm -hmm. And she wants things but she doesn't want to be given things she tries to take things and she doesn't like it when she doesn't get what she tries to take and she becomes very bitter so the first four two books of the series of the four book series are basically about olives coming of age and okay. then uh, that's but that's the first book, Becoming All of W. And then the second book, Under the Grapevine, is about Olive's children. Okay. And it's a very dysfunctional family. It continues <laughs> to be totally dysfunctional. And Harriet, the protagonist from the last two books, is actually Olive's youngest daughter. Okay. So we move from Olive through Harriet and then in the final book that was just published between two dreams Shelby uh -oh, Harriet's daughter is the last main character that is a strong Campbell County woman but it, it's not just these three women from this family it's about all of sisters in their relationships and Harriet's sisters and their relationships and how the women cope with World War One and losses in World War Two and losses and you know the depression in between that and so I I take very um, factual information from history and put okay. it into these fictional stories so it's as if these women actually lived in that time oh, okay so you do a lot a lot lots of fact finding before you start writing your books ton tons okay. of it and i do it as i write too a lot of uh, fiction writers, uh, depending upon the genre, you can do a lot of your um, research and fact finding uh, before you start writing, uh, especially if you're world building and things like that. But when you're doing historical fiction, 
you might write a scene and all of a sudden decide that the uh, um, packaging for one of the original Bell telephones is an important fact. <laughs> yeah. So you have to like stop and go research what did the Bell telephone come packaged in? You know, right. you might have an idea of how the telephone actually looked, but how was it packaged? How was it sent? How would they have received this delivery? That kind of stuff. So there's a lot of stop and go. Lot of right. Stuff. I get that. So let me backtrack. When you talked about the women of Campbell County, you were telling us about it being strong females. Tell me what's the drive to write in such a way, making your characters women and doing the stronger characters. What drives you in that kind of way? Um, <laughs> basically, uh, I think in one of my little bios, I say about my mother deciding that I would attend college before I was even born. It was like at the moment of conception when she realized she was having a baby, uh -huh. she decided that if this child were female, that child would go to college. I grew up in a very modest income family. I was the first grandchild on both sides and I'm third from the youngest on both sides to go to college. But yet my entire life, I grew up knowing I would go to college. There was never ever anything in my mind other than going to college. Oh. And so my the strong women comes from my mother. Uh, she was very independent and um she was bound and determined that both of her girls and she only had the two of us would be able to function both financially mentally um securely without a man oh so well i like her <laughs> yeah, that was her goal Mm -hmm. um, it's not that she didn't want us to find love. It's well, just no. she wanted us to be independent. And, right. you know, being a, a wife in the 50s, she was still the, the subject of her husband. Right. So, well, she, you know, that is an incredible, that is an incredible point of view for the day and age that she decided that she wanted you her girls to have a more position in life to be able to take care of yourselves. That's actually an awesome mentality, especially for the day and age for the 1950s. Exactly. It was. So that's where the whole concept of these strong women. So I decided just to take it back a couple my generation before that. And we started with Olive in 1905. And she was, like I said before, she was one spunky little character and um, she was doing this stuff for herself. Right. And so do you think you base all of more on your mother's mentality? No. Um, no? <clears throat> well, maybe Olive's drive and okay, maybe the drive. drive of all the women and the ability of all the women to be self-reliant and um, to take the bad in the moment and to be able to cope with it. That is my mother's mentality. Right. Um, Did it really instill that same ability in yourself? Oh, yeah. I, I am one of these strong <laughs> alpha females. Nice. I grew up in a man's world. I mean, mm -hmm. I had a man's profession, um, a man's job. I learned to golf with the men on the golf course. I was the, you know, the designated fourth if one of the guys dropped out. I mean, I just grew up. I drink men's cocktails, you know. When right. I married my husband, he drank coffee with cream and sugar and I shamed him and said, real men drink <laughs> black coffee. So um, I guess that's all from my mother. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't, I don't see that that's a totally horrible thing. I actually am impressed um, to be able to have that strength to take care of yourself 
you're self-reliant. And I find that extremely, um, I tip my hat to you. I find that extremely outstanding. Thank you. You're welcome. So with six books listed on Amazon, what do you see coming next for you? Oh, I have uh, I have a meeting scheduled with my writing coach in two weeks. Are you still there? Yes, I'm here. I'm sorry. I'm shutting off the timer because otherwise it will go beep, beep, beep. <laughs> so oh, go I ahead. heard the beep, beep on my side. Sorry. Yeah, I it was just a, a, trust me, that's just a little beep in comparison to what it would sound <laughs> like when it goes off. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. I have a meeting schedule with my writing coach in two weeks, and we're going to talk about two potential projects. Uh, one is uh, historical fiction, once again, strong female, mm -hmm. and it um, revolves around three owners of one particular ring. And I think in the first series, Between Two Dreams, my main theme was to address the um, inequality in the workplace, in society of male-female. In this second book, I want to talk a, a little bit about uh, discrimination. Mm. Uh, so that will be uh, an overarching theme if I pursue the ring series. Now, my writing coach wants me to go the ring series. And I, on the other hand, independent thinking woman that I am, <laughs> right. want to write a comedic satire about three, six families that live on a cul-de-sac. And this would be husband-wife relationship or partner-partner relationship and then neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor relationship. But the catch is it's observed by and narrated by the local feral cat. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yes. I can see where that would be the comedic side right there. That is awesome. And that's uh, I, what I want to do. Now I have to convince my writing coach that that's what I'm going to do. Right. Well, I want to thank you so much for being on our program tonight, Sherry. You were a true delight. And our doors are open always if you'd like to come back again. Um, so it was a great pleasure to have you on tonight. Well, thank you very much. And I would love to come back. Um, I enjoy the chat and I just enjoy having the readers out there learn a little bit about me because oh, I am huh? I am this little clinical pharmacist that's writing fiction now. Right. Well, you're more than welcome to share the post. I will make sure by um within the next couple of days your links and everything should be up so you'll have it at your fingertips i promise okay thank you very much you're thank welcome you for having me well anytime you're more than welcome to come back and share your newest work um so thank you so much i want to thank again our listeners thank you for joining us every day um we have had today will be our 75th show and we have been downloaded over 1.8K downloads, um, so 1,000.8. So I want to thank you so much, everybody, for continuing to be a part of the show and continuing us making us what we are. Until next time, bye-bye for now.